Welcome back to the RabbitMQ project, where it's time for you to write your first Java-based RabbitMQ message consumer so you can consume messages. And for that, you go straight back into the project, copy the sender class, and simply duplicate it into the project. Just make sure you call it consumer this time. Because the sender and consumer share many things, let's go through it one by one. Obviously, you need a connection factory because you want to open up connections to the RabbitMQ server, which you do here. The first difference already is that in the sending case, you had the try with resources block. You open up a connection, you send a message, and you close down the connection again. In the receiving case, that's not what you want. You want to keep your connection open because you get messages asynchronously, sporadically even. And that means when you close the connection, you won't get any more messages. So let's delete the try block here, like so. Reformat the code. Good. Then you have your channel. Also in the receiving case, you need to do everything through a channel. And the next step, the queue declaration, you can leave it in. The thing is, on a blank RabbitMQ instance, if you start your consumer before the sender, you won't have any queues. And that's why you can just make sure to declare the queue in your consumers and senders, so it's going to be there, and you won't have any bad surprises. Then you don't want to send a message, you also want to delete the system of print on. you also don't want to do a channel basic publish, instead you want to call channel basic consume. And when I open up the parameter list now, I can see that the basic consume method has a ton of different variations. What I want to do, however, is I want to call the method with string Q, so that's the Q name to consume messages from, a Boolean, should my client acknowledge the message or not acknowledge the message. And as you learned in the previous episode, that means the message will be requeued again if you don't acknowledge it, it and you'll get it again the next time. So we want to set that to true. And then we have a deliver callback and a cancel callback. And I'm going to tell you what these two do in a second. But for now, I'll just copy my uh, hello world queue name here. I'm going to say true. Yeah, I want to acknowledge the message. And then I have a new deliver callback here. New deliver callback. And we're going to change that to be a uh, lambda in a second. And you also have a new cancel callback here. Right, that's all you need to do. Now let's start with the cancel callback. It has one parameter, the consumer tag, and I'll just convert it to a lambda. The thing is, you as a consumer, you can be canceled any moment by the server, actually. The server can say, I don't want to send messages to that guy anymore. A consumer tag is a tag you get, an ID from the server when you connect to the server and open up a channel that identifies you as a consumer. But for now, we don't want to do anything here. We just don't get canceled in this project. Right. And the same with the deliver callback. You can see it has two methods, consumer tag and the message. That's your ID again. And the message is your real RabbitMQ message, your AMQP message, which hopefully contains the text that we wrote before. Is this the matrix? Now let's replace it with a lambda as well. And let's have a look at the message. The message has a couple of methods, get body, envelope, properties. We don't care so much about the envelope and properties. We're going to cover them later again. But for now, we want to go straight to the body. And remember, it's a byte array. We sent our string in the previous episode, converted it to a byte array. And here we're just going to get the bytes back. We need to convert the bytes to a string, which is rather simple. You just put in the byte array here and uh, the message encoding or the string encoding rather. Right, like so. You have a new string and I'll just call it M here. Right, and then I'm going to print out my message and I might just say I just received a message, something like that, right? Now I'll do one thing, I'll go back to my sender and make sure that I actually 
append the local date time now to the string so you can actually see a difference and not always is this the matrix. Okay, now time to start our consumer. You simply run it. And as soon as you call basic consume, you'll basically wait, your Java program will wait for new messages. And you can see I just received the message, is this the matrix? That was the first message or the only one message left in our queue from the previous episode. But now let's try and send a couple more messages here. So I'm just gonna run the sender once, I'm gonna run it twice, and I might actually run it three times. So we're gonna expect three messages now. Okay, we're gonna go back to the consumer tab. And as you can see, I just received the message three times printed out of the console with three different timestamps. That's because we append the local date time now here. And that's actually everything you needed to do to consume messages. So now you can consume messages, you can send messages, you know how to declare queues and whatnot. That means you now have all the skills you need to build the YouTube clone.